Hey folks, my name is Provis. Welcome back to more Hearts of Iron 4 Old World Blues. We are playing as the Kingdom of Manitoba, led by the Eternal King Gun II, which is going pretty well so far. We've managed to reform most of our land. The Duchy of Langenberg is under control. We were able to get the Stoon Dandies to control all of their territory, and supposedly they're more likely to collaborate with me in the future. We'll find out if that's true. We even did the same for the Arborg Junta and got rid of the Damned. So now we need to continue expanding our power, and it looks like we will be able to do that in the north by taking the Blighted Woods territory. We should also be able to take the Gateway. And I looked a bit further down the Focus Tree. Eventually, we'll be able to take on places like the Iron Confederacy as well and a few others. So we should be able to get a lot of territory. The real question is, when is the uh, Second Coalition going to pose a problem to me? Because my entire southern border is kind of flooded with enemies right now. And I don't know of a good way to break them up. I don't know if there is a way to do that. So we're going to have to figure that out. Is this really a question of where we need to scale up faster than they can? Or are they going to be able to sneak attack me and I need to be ready for them at any given moment? Unknown. We're going to find out. One thing I do know is that we're going to need a lot more troops than what I currently have. So that's why we are going to now focus on getting the Gather Our Banners focus so I can get some extra manpower. Also change up some conscription law. That'll be useful for me, and then we can focus on a few other things like maybe going down to getting rid of the Defeat at Stonewall, which is really crushing my manpower right now, plus my war support, justifying war goal time, conscription laws, etc. It's just bad. When we're done with all that, though, we could start focusing on a couple different directions. Focus more on the economy, work to becoming golden once more, a golden age for the Kingdom of Manitoba, which would get me sophisticated construction tech, which is pretty darn good. We could also instead focus on getting things like, let's say, war goals against, um, where is it? The Gateway. There it is down there. We can get a war goal for everything there, which could be nice. Get rid of a blockade. And eventually take the fight directly to the Second Coalition. So we'll have to play that one by ear. We also want to continue training up as many Mounties as possible. The Mounties are going to be our lifeblood, I think, when it comes to having some elite special forces that win wars. Not that they have the best stats in the world, don't get me wrong. 59.2 soft attack is not exactly amazing, but it's a pretty good ratio to manpower. Not bad. That's far better, I think than anything else I currently have. I mean, levies 38 to 225. Yeah, just definitely not better. Uh, 44 to 205. Yeah, no. So, considering manpower is, like, the main bottleneck for most nations, in Old World Blues, that's where you want to have as much stats per manpower as possible. That's why I usually like power armor. Yes, it's expensive from a construction perspective, right? The production costs are astronomical, but it preserves your manpower by an absolute ton, and you can fit so much stats into a little bit of combat with. Unfortunately, we don't have any power armor technology whatsoever, so there's nothing I can do about that one. All this being said, though, you know, as many troubles as I think we are having right now in our nation, we're setting ourselves up pretty nicely for success, in my opinion. Like, we've got five research slots. It's not bad. I don't have a ton of civilian factories, only 14 that I can work with right now. Still, it could be a lot worse. Like, my point is, like, technologically, we could really ramp ourselves up in a pretty big way if I can just get more factories and a larger manpower base. Which is why I think that moving north and coring some territory here could be good, and if there is a way to get the Eastern Mar- They were the Junta, now they're the Eastern Marches, I just realized that. If there's a way to get them back under our control and the Stoon Dandies to collaborate and maybe get annexed, though I don't know if that actually exists, um, that could be pretty huge for us. Become one giant blobby nation in the plains of Canada, and then we take down the Coalition, core all this territory, and we become a true force to be reckoned with. Hold on, what just happened over here? Another thing just happened. An expedition from Arborg. We've seen this before, they brought us a gift. Who knew these mercenaries would be so gracious? why they just turn blue? why they just become my vassal? I don't know, but they did! Thank you! Like, why did I not get a pop-up about that? Doesn't that seem like the sort of thing I should have gotten as a little bit of a pop-up saying, hey, these people have decided to go ahead and rejoin the kingdom and become a vassal. They're a march. That's important! I don't know, we'll see. Maybe that is gonna change the calculus of the Second Coalition a little bit, though. They're like, you know what? Maybe attacking over here is not a good idea now that they can attack me from the north. <laughs> actually, if I had more troops, I'd send some over here. We'd actually be able to try to take you out quickly. I, I, this changes things, okay? Okay, we're about a month away from being able to declare war against the Blighted Woods. It's gonna be a little risky pulling my troops off the border, but I think it's time to go ahead and do that. Let's get ready for a fight. I did not anticipate this to be a very difficult war. We could be surprised, of course, but so far this looks kind of fine. Frost lurks. 
That's the kind of you. What the frick are these giant crabs? This is where if I were a bit more of an aficionado when it comes to things like uh, Old World Blues or just Fallout in general, um, maybe I wouldn't be so surprised by such things. And yet I am. I was not expecting giant crab. Okay, we've finished most of these focuses down over here, which means now we can move on to rebuilding our might, which is going to fix quite a few problems, I believe, also that war support and justifying. Uh, war goals is just going to be very useful going forward. So once we're finished with this, the question is where do we go next? Um, I think I have to work down things like the heir apparent, which I don't really want to offload my administration to the Duchess of Langenberg. We could. I don't really care about that too much. Uh, but that would lead to conquering the gateway, and since our troops are already up here, also we'd be able to weaken the blockade, which is currently hurting my economy. Like, eh, it's probably the next direction to go, I think. Yeah. Anyway, we have our justification. Let's go ahead and start our war. And Mounties! Go! Oh, look at that. They absolutely crush these fools. This is gonna be a very easy war. Anyway, we've already got a lot of this, so we're gonna be good. Another day of infamy. Every year I'm gonna be remembering the American betrayal. We have not gotten over that, is all I can say. There we go. I even get some kill claws. I tamed a few. I don't, I, I don't really need them. But they're there, which is cool. Let's take this territory. It's mine now. All right, so that territory is now under my control. We can have everyone go back down over here if we wanted to, um, or we could set up against the gateway. I'm gonna have to justify a war goal against them anyway, so not an immediate thing we need to worry about. All right, well, either way, more territory, the kingdom grows. All right, rebuilding our might, done. We got rid of the defeat at Stonewall. Everything else looks like kind of standard research bonuses for military technology. I'm not worried about that. What do we have over here in the far right? Naval stuff? Yeah, I'm not really worried about that either. Um, okay, so I think that means that, yeah, we're gonna go for the heir apparent next. It sure as heck looks to me like the Gateway has a very good chance of winning this war. I do not want to declare war on them until I know for sure what's happening. Because, um, one way or another, if I'm gonna get a war goal on all this territory, if I get a war goal against the Gateway and then they die, that sucks against me. If the Iron Confederacy dies and I get a claim against the Gateway, then I get to take all of this, but if I declare war while they're still in the middle of the war, I have to share stuff with the Iron Confederacy. Which makes the war easy, for sure, but... No, wait, there we go. Problem solved! Alright, I don't even have to finish that thought. It happens. So now we definitely want to take down the Gateway. Offloading the administration with the recent territorial successes to the West, we have reached an administrative bottleneck as we restore ancient territories. Manitoban land was much more decentralized in the Old Kingdom and given more autonomy under our duchies and marches. However, this decentralization eventually led to the fall of the kingdom. Despite this, it might be time to expand the scope of the last duchy, Lengenberg. While we are still healing from the wounds of their treachery, it would be a disservice to claim Eleanor Yorkton hasn't remained faithful to the crown and quell our fears of future rebellion. The lands of the West will be transferred to the Duchy of Langenberg for the time being until our Republican enemies on our borders are taken care of. So they are going to get Wadena as their new core. Okay, any future bloody electorate land, which was the three-way war, uh, three war that we fought earlier, is also going to be transferred to them. So basically we just gave them this one territory over here. That could have been a lot worse. It's not a huge deal and it's cord for them. Okay. We'll get it all back when we eventually annex Langenberg, and you all know we're gonna. We're gonna annex everyone. I believe in absolute centralized authority. We'll also continue getting some upgrades for our Doctrine Schools over here. I'm gonna get the extra Breakthrough Soft Attack Heart Attack for Special Forces, Organization for Light Special Forces, and then we can get even more good stuff by refining the best. It does take a lot of army XP to do this, but it's nice. Speaking of Doctrines, we now have the Wedge Formation. That's 15% Breakthrough for my entire army which seems pretty solid. Then we can go for some extra formations here for even more for all walking infantry. Like our infantry armies are gonna be very, very strong, I think. The gateway is demanding some territory. Oh, that ain't happening. I'm gonna go ahead and justify my war goal against you now. 100 days? Eh, all right. To be extra safe, I'm gonna go ahead and start moving some troops up to the north just in case they're gonna do something I don't like. I'm pretty sure they're just gonna get a war goal against me though. So unless I can justify a war goal a lot faster than I can, we'll be fine. Yeah, there goes the ultimatum. They did immediately declare war. Well, I'm glad that I moved my troops up here then. Frickin' heck, that was... I really... I thought they only would get a claim. I was wrong! Glad, glad, glad I did not count on that. Let's call these guys to arms. We got troops ready. We're ready for you. This, this barely worked out fine for me. We're just gonna contain them here at Manifest North while I push up to the pass. 
try to encircle their troops, and then we'll just grab their capital, and I think that's going to be it for them. They were not ready for this war, very ill-advised. And that's already it. That was a super fast war. That took, like, no time at all. And now I get all this land. Beautiful. And the timing of this is actually working out very nicely, because the War of the Second Coalition would be allowed to start in just a couple of months, if I want to. Which I don't have to, but if I want to, we could go to war in a very, very short period of time against the entire coalition and just end this threat once and for all. God, the Strath Commune appears to have won their wars pretty resoundingly, though. Frickin' heck, I thought for sure Strath Commune was gonna die. They got attacked by everyone around them, and they grew out of it. Frickin' commies. Don't you worry, I'll deal with them in due course. Okay, we got time for one more focus before I would be able to start the war. Again, if I want to, I am not obligated to do that. Uh, we still haven't done things like the agriculture. Could do that over here. Um, civilian factory construction speed is kind of done and passed. Weekly stability for a bit could be nice. More civilian workshops, night to remember, blah, blah, blah. Or, under the King's Banner, special forces get more soft attack, hard attack, and organization. Yeah. Why not? All right. All I care about is having one really good attack unit. One really good one. That's all I care about. You could also go for loyalty unto death and get, oh my gosh, even more. Okay. Fine, we can wait one more month. That is so much stat value from Special Forces equipment. And we're only making them better because now we have refining the best. So before we even get this next round of benefit, 64 attack for 145 manpower. That is so good. That's really solid. And I haven't even added in all of the um, support companies I would want, like some demolitions or fire teams for a lot of extra soft attack value. All right, now I've got this, so... This is just gonna get me claims. It doesn't actually do much else beyond that. We could still choose when to start the war, but this gives me options. So I'm gonna do that. This will get me claims on everybody, I believe. Yeah, I think, um, I don't know if we're necessarily ready for this war, but I feel pretty strong. And I feel like with my little vassal states, there's a good chance we could win this. I just have to be careful. And I would wanna use a strategy of basically swooping from the right and then working my way left. So hold our ground against the Metis Congress and then take out the three rivers using my mounties, then just push, push, push. That's how I'd like to do it. May not work out that way, but we'll see. Maybe it would be better to crush the three rivers, because that's going to be a big army, pull back, get over here, use Brandon as a launching point to cut off these guys, and then surround them. That might be a better way to go. I mean, these are the kinds of things I'm thinking about, though. Now, as far as, like, the different branching paths here, you might be wondering, like, what would have happened if we hadn't gone down this route? I'm pretty sure bring the Metis back and ending the False Republic only would have worked if they had not been in factions with each other. I'm not sure if there's like a different branching path they could have taken or what, but since these guys are in a faction with each other, it was never going to work out. It'll take me 85 days to justify a war goal against the Republic of the Three Rivers. So out of curiosity, like how strong do we really think these guys are? So they've trained up more troops, for sure. So they're going to have like 22 or something like that. That's risky. But, with my Mounties being superior, plus the Eastern Marches to distract, I think we could still beat that. The Old Believers, I can see you've got a decent number of soldiers yourself, so you've got everything on your northern border, I think. Actually, this is partly your allied troops as well, so it's a bunch of guys there. The Midas Congress scares me a little bit. They're not as strong as I would have expected, though. Okay. I, I feel like we could possibly beat this. Screw it, we're doing it. We're gonna go ahead and start justifying a war goal. I got a few more troops that are being trained up once I got all these guys deployed, like... Yeah, I, I, think we, I think we'll have a decisive advantage. I think my Mounties are just that good, is really what it comes down to. I think my special forces can beat your special forces. The Great Standees just attacked the Stoon. They did. Good gravy. These Great Stampede couples, whoever they are, they are uh, quite the warmonger. And the Stoon Dandies just declared war on the Strathcom... Well, you're dead. Why would you start a second war when you just got attacked? Who thought that was a good idea? Did you think I was going to come and save you again? You thought wrong! Actually, you know something that just occurred to me? I could just not call in the Duchy of Langenberg, and I don't even have to defend all this land right now, do I? There's an interesting thought. Um, yeah, actually. Maybe we can't afford to change this up entirely. Hold on. Because unless they have a goal to force the Duchy in, if I just never call them in, this is never going to be a problem, right? Unless, of course, by calling in the Eastern Marches, they then call in the Lingenberg, in which case I could be in a lot of trouble. I don't think they will, though. This might be a bit risky. So we're going to start the war. I'm going to immediately call in the Eastern Marches, but not the Duchy of Langenberg. We're going to hold this line and not do anything for a moment. And we're going to push, push, push. And if I can get to Porto Pueri and encircle all of these guys, that's huge. 
And I got fast moving, strong mounty units. Like we could possibly do this. Yeah, their units are trying to get into position, but we're going to cut them off. No one's called in Langenberg. They got all these troops sitting here, waiting, doing nothing. And they don't even want to attack me over here. So far, so good. This is exactly the sort of thing I'm looking for right now. He's starting to pull back. We're not going to let you do that. We are going to attack from this direction and pin you down while I move. Almost got this. Almost got this. Come on, just a bit more while his organization is nice and low. Keep going. Keep going. There we go. There we go. Got it. Okay. That is almost their entire army encircled. We've got this now. Begin the crushing campaign. Squish them from both sides. Like one of those hydraulic press videos that are so oddly satisfying. They're still holding out fairly well considering, to be honest, but it's only a matter of time. Get wrecked, son. All right, what kind of casualties are we looking at out of that arrangement? I'm guessing pretty good. Uh, Manitoban aggression for Porto Prairie, yeah. They've lost 4.2 thousand men and I've lost 343. I think the results speak for themselves there, guys. Let's go ahead and reinforce this river crossing. I'm not gonna worry about this for a little bit. I just wanna make sure I don't lose any ground. While I then reposition my Mounties to go for another encirclement, we're gonna go ahead and push along the river to North End, encircle everything here, and then I think it's gonna be free reign. We shall avenge Stonewall! So they've lost now 7,000 men compared to my 467. It just works, guys. Now if I can just make some pushes down to Fort Gary and Transcona, I think that'll be the end of it. Not quite, 96%. Uh, take Oak Bluff and Starbucks? There's two Starbucks! Wait a minute. Why are there two towns named Starbuck? Who could even tell you at this point? There we go. Republic of the Free Rivers is gone. Now we just need to clean up the rest of these troops. Die! And we want to move fast on this because right now this border is completely undefended, which means my Mounties can go on a mass killing spree. Go! Push, 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 push. Don't slow down. This is our chance to make some serious headway. Go, 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 go. This is working out beautifully, by the way. And you know what? It's all because we're not calling in our vassal. The AI is so screwed here. Now, granted, we actually could call them in and Langenberg has enough... Tr okay, now we can actually just go ahead and call them to arms. Let's do it. My point is, though, this is always true in Vanilla Hoi 4 and it certainly is true in Old World Blues. You can use these little buffer states to really screw with the AI because they're like, we have to leave some defenses against these borders, otherwise we could be vulnerable. And that's true, they have to do that. But if you never, like, do it, then... They've split their forces, you concentrate force, you crush, you surround, you win. And this is actually the main use I have for vassal states. It's not because I actually like the whole, I don't know, um, compliance and all that stuff. I don't really care about what they give me. They usually give me garbage units and not a lot of resources or factories. But what I freaking love is being able to outmaneuver an AI. Still pushing, still doing... I don't know if you all heard that, that my son has apparently decided that he's uh, got an opinion about something. Starting to see a little losses come up over here, but we're almost up to 12,000. The old believers will fall, and then once they do, we have um, basically unlimited access to get into the Midas Congress, which is going to be great. Let's host a royal ball. We're at war. Yeah, people are dying, but the war is going great. We should party. A night to remember. The ball was the event of the year, and the queen proved herself again as nothing less than the most gracious host. However, the glimmering palace and lavish decorations could not distract from the suspicious absence of her husband. Nonetheless, the ball continued on, even as the rumors of the king's illness spread around the room. That was until the absolute highlight of the evening surpassed even the immaculate food and wonderful music, which was always entertaining dispute, that's a bit of a weird sentence there, between the duck mountaineers and a group of Manitoban aristocrats. It is no secret that they got along like oil and water, but it seemed the absence of the king and the abundance of alcohol had allowed their heated arguments to almost break out into an actual brawl. To the delight of everyone but the queen, the two parties moved on from the thinly veiled threats to poorly hidden threats, to outright calls for violence. There was little doubt that the aristocrats would be no match for the considerably larger Mountie, whose muscles were a result of a life of backbreaking labor. The first bets were already being placed when the surprising arrival of the king put a stop to the matter entirely, his cold gaze immediately assessing the situation that threatened to unfold before his eyes, as he sternly called both of them to order. The king reprimanded his nobles in front of all the guests, like a school teacher scolding his pupils, which was met with considerable joy by the other attendants who relished this rare opportunity of seeing their social betters cast down for once. After finishing his improvised speech, Gun II returned to his wife's side before apologizing to the guests for his delayed arrival without giving any definitive answer as to what could have kept him. Good, it's always important to keep up appearances. Stability goes up by a whopping 10%, not bad. 
So this war should be ending very, very soon now. Um, again, we've lost about 1,000 men to their 16,000. And that's only because I'm not micromanaging it more now at this point. I'm just kind of letting it do its thing. We could have been more efficient with it, but I'd still say about a 16 or 20 to 1-ish kill ratio is pretty dang promising, and we've got plenty more manpower to go around. And if this is my only major threat, at least for the moment, um, this means that I should be able to have some unfettered access to uh, annexing a lot of other territory to my south. I keep saying unfettered access. I say that a lot. That's a weird thing about me sometimes, right? Is um, I sometimes get like specific words or phrases in my head. And then when I'm recording, it's like a fallback position, and I say it several times. I don't know why I do that. Anyway, here's all this stuff. Great. I've got the lion's share of the war score, as is only appropriate. Let's take all of this land. Also love to take the boats from the uh, Republic of the Three Rivers. So I can just build up a small navy for free. And there we go. The Kingdom of Manitoba hath grown rather dramatically all of a sudden. Well, well, well! Second coalition not as good as the first, huh? So, what do we do next? Well, I can't go for golden once more until I finish everything over here, which is going to take too long. Instead, I'd rather say, This is the greatest day ever for the kingdom! Which would get me a glorious triumph. Um, isn't King Gun supposed to, like, go insane and die at some point soon, by the way? I'm a little concerned about his well-being. Because so far, we haven't talked any more about the fact that he's turning a little bit feral. Haven't really talked about that. Seems kind of important. So I'm a little concerned that if I go down the um, route for our story a little bit too much, I might accidentally create like a civil war crisis. But I might not. Might be totally fine. It just seems like the right thing to do. We won a war. Who holds off on the party? We should party. Glorious triumph! The bells ring in the city of Brandon as the victory parade passes down the main road. People line the street, a crowd filled with cheering Manitobans from within the city and beyond, all here in celebration of peace and victory. After many years of hardship and conflict, the war against the enemies of the Three Rivers and the Midas Congress have been crushed, and the kingdom stands proud once again. The procession, planned to take place over the next three days, is filled with Manitoba's finest soldiers, men and women holding their heads up high with pride as they march down the winding street. Regiments from the lowliest food corps to the bravest mountaineers all move as one, dressed in their finest livery and uniforms. At the head of the procession is none other than William Tanner, the king's finest soldier, holding the flag of Manitoba and the king's own duck mountaineers high as he rides upon his horse, saluting the king's palace as they march past. King Gunn himself had retired shortly before the procession reached his residence, stating that he felt unwell. Though his absence is a disappointment, none in the kingdom could fault their stoic king for the efforts he has expended to lead and protect the kingdom. We wish him the best. All right, there goes the limited markets. So that problem is now dealt with. Oh, and now we're going to have the scary death scream. Here we go. Yeah. The good old raiding sirens and the ah, ah of the AI. For those who don't know, if you haven't seen this, we've done this many a time. But basically, the main AI that kept Mexico together just died. It's fine, it's fine. All right, now we have choices to make. What is this? An empty throne? Uh, okay, we have not had... Always false? Wait, what is this? Requires the greatest day of the kingdom, always false, mutually exclusive with an empty throne. Something's happening here, or it's going to happen here. Huh. So we could choose to, I guess, follow the Mounties and William Tanner and form a commonwealth of Manitoba. Or we could continue focusing on the king. And we all know that I'm going to go for the monarchy route this time around, because you don't see that in Old World Blues very often. But interesting that now is the point where we have to make some choices. Still, what else do we have over here? Restore Winnipeg. Uh, gain a reduction in coring all of the Republic of the Three Rivers uh, territory. That's pretty good. Plus, we get a load of compliance. Same thing here with reintegrating the Metis. Okay, all of this is great. There's also governing new lands. Uh, resistance target and damage to garrisons goes down. Again, we get cost reductions for a bunch of different cores. Seems useful. Um, I'd rather just go ahead and get the compliance going, though. That is going to save me a ton of manpower and equipment, so we're just going to do it. Also, hello. The Strath Commune has reformed. They are now the Canadian People's Front. Well, that sounds even more communist-y than before, even though the last one actually said commune in it. Whenever I see people something, I know something's up. Shadowed victory. Oh, dear. Fireworks shoot out into the evening sky, illuminating the cheering people below. Finally, after months of war, the treasonous Three Rivers Republic has been destroyed, and the proud kingdom of Manitoba stands triumphant. Yet not all are celebrating this achievement. 
deep within the palace at the heart of the city. In a dark shaded room sits King Gun II. The muffled sounds of fireworks barely stir the ghoul king, lost so deeply in his thoughts. His hands were shaking in abject terror. At first, the visions that now plagued him were like a distant dream. These days, they came to him with alarming clarity. Their subject matter was always the same. Time and time again, he was forced to watch himself tearing through the palace, killing all he could find. He chokes back a sob, the very thought of laying hands on his beloved Catherine revolting, yet he couldn't stop his mind from picturing himself standing over her lifeless body, her blood still dripping from his hands, as every instance of him committed the act echoed through the brain with alarming clarity. Shaking his head, Gunn looks towards a shaded window. The simple act once used to be enough to disperse the shadows clinging to his mind. His mind grasping for a distraction followed the colored lights of fireworks barely creaking in the dimly lit room. And for what felt like the hundredth time, his attention was drawn to his desk, that they now so ominously illuminated. Standing up, he slowly made his way towards the old piece of Victorian furniture that dominated the small room. His thoughts shifted from petrifying fear to grim determined. Are you done, Gimli? Are you done, Borkin? Bork, Bork? I don't know what he's doing. His thoughts shifted from petrifying fear to grim determination as he opened a draw and withdrew an ornate pre-war revolver. Oh, God. Um, Gunn stared at the weapon in his hand as he made his way back to the couch, surprised at how familiar the heavy grip still felt in his hand, even after all these years. It had been a gift, given centuries prior, a past age, a different life. The golden letters reminded him briefly of his true name. He allowed his mind to dwell on his memory. A typically for him, this was a day he still recalled vividly, when his friend whose name he shamelessly used handed it to him. A sign of trust, of brotherhood, and his message was still engraved in his mind, that they would both always fight for Canada's people. In spite of himself, Gunn could not help but crack a small pained smile. Gunn had given him a gun. He may have even laughed, if not for the pain nostalgia that overwhelmed him. He ran his fingers over the ornate pattern, etched in by hand, though he does not truly comprehend them. Instead, he is thinking about his people, those he has fought so hard to protect in this cruel, radiation-blasted world. Does he want to be remembered by them as a monster who lost his humanity? A man who, in his final moments, attempted to bring death? No. Gunn wanted his name to be remembered as it was now. The name of the hero who fought for his people, who gave all he had in order to bring about a life for those he loved. It was this thought that filled his mind as Gun II, King of Manitoba, repeatedly pulled back and reset the hammer on his revolver. So, I assume this is where we now get to make a choice. Does he kill himself or no? If he kills himself now, I'm just gonna say, whatever the people feel about this war is gonna end in tragedy. This will shatter the nation. Well, we already know what we're gonna decide, so let's throw the revolver across the room. We've maintained the power balance. Gun II stared at the revolver he had tossed, light glinting off its metal frame. Even after all he had been through, Gunn found his will lacking in this key moment. As he stands to retrieve it, he is interrupted by a knock on the door. He calls out that the door is open, adjusting his clothes as a servant comes in. The servant bows before his king, apologizing for the interruption, though Gunn waves it off, not particularly in the mood for decorum. He questions why the servant is here, as he requested that he not be disturbed. Standing from his bow, the servant states that his courtiers are getting restless at his absence, and so the queen requests his presence. Gunn sighs and rubs his brow. These people are incompetent and power-hungry, and must already be plotting to better themselves. He waves off the servant and begins to prepare himself for the courtly machinations ahead, when his eyes fall upon an image of the royal seal. For over two centuries, the kingdom had stood, yet Gunn knew it had only been possible thanks to its monarch. A new thought began to form in his mind. He could not leave behind his beloved people at the mercy of those vultures, who circled his throne as he slowly lost his mind. No, with what little time he had left, he would ensure that the kingdom would survive him, that it would continue to stand tall and proud, continue to be a beacon of stability and civilization in this nuclear hellscape of a world, that his beloved wife could rest easily and without worry once he had succumbed. Gunn exited his room, not as the weak suicidal man that had entered before, but as the duty-bound king his people expected of him. All right, so we are now a decaying one, which is now costing me political power. Well, that sucks! Still, from here on out, I centralize my authority. We are going to destroy the electorate, who, by the way, are already destroyed. We are going to reclaim the North, who, by the way, are already destroyed. We are going to core the old one, the old believer's territory. Actually, that's useful. Sure. And we can welcome back in Moose Jaw. 
It looks like we could also do things like just straight out annex the East Marches and Langenberg. Yeah, we're about to do a lot of good stuff here. Okay, this is where we're going to solidify ourselves into a true power. And we are going to reclaim all of Canada. That is the goal of this series. All of Canada shall be once again united. Thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If so, I would ask you to hit that like button, leave a comment, subscribe, make sure you hit that notify bell, and I will see you guys next time.